Okay, Professor Lewis here, and we're talking about torsion. And in this lab, this is kind of the little mini lecture on understanding the parameters that go into torsion. Now, what is torsion? We're going to be taking and applying opposing torques on the different ends of a shaft at some length, at some known diameter, and when it does that, the shaft will twist at some deformated angle. So it's not going to be in the same place on this end as it will be over here. So this line will actually twist and be over here. So we're going to see that shaft twist, and you're going to see this in lab. Now, we need to ask ourselves, what is torque? Torque is basically the force at a distance. So the further we're out on this wrench, the less we have to pull down. Here's 10 pounds pulling down. Here's 20 pounds pulling down. If I was just to look at individual hands being pulled down here and calculating their distances, I could calculate the torques are going to be the same at 20 foot pounds. So they're, they're the same torques. And so that's just how we're doing our torque there. Now we're going to have a gearbox that we're going to be doing that's a 61 to ratio and for every one turn it's going to turn six degrees that we have on that wheel. Now torsional shear stress is represented by TC over J. This is an equation you should remember and we always want to think of it as tau max. Now we usually forget about the max and we just say tau is equal to TC over J, but that is the maximum stress which is going to be on the outer portion of this diameter. So T is our torque. We understand how to calculate torque and that's what we're going to be trying to find in lab is what kind of torque did we put on some shafts. We can measure the radius of the shaft. That's easy to do. And then we need to talk about this J, this polar moment of inertia. Before we get into that, let's talk about the uh, shear strength and where do we find those properties. Here I've put up a copy of a section from MatWeb for a piece of A36 steel. Now again, this is just A36 steel bar. This is a structural steel with 36 KSI. So if I look at the yield right here, it's about 36 KSI. We have the inch and the metric units. Things that they usually tell us, you know, we got our density, our UTS, our yield. They give us our modulus elasticity. They're going to give us everything all the way down here to Poisson's ratio, which we're going to talk about. So remember that our Poisson's ratio is 0.26, and make note of that it's unitless. Okay, it doesn't have units because it's going to be a strain-derived uh, entity. Now, to get our yield strength, we could look right here. But we cannot say the yield strength is equal to the strength of the material in shear. We have to do what we call distortion theory, and you probably learned about that in your lecture classes and the main theory classes. And in short, we're going to take 57.7% of the tensile yield strength. So what I'm going to do is come up in here and do a search on MatWeb, find my tensile yield. Take this right here, this 36, it's almost 36 KSI, and if I do that, it's going to come out to about 20.7 KSI if I multiply it times that. So it's going to be prorated down. It's not as strong in shear as it is in yield for tensile. Now then, we've talked about the shear strength. We know what that is. We know what torque is. We can measure C. This is the only animal we need to talk about here, and this is J. This is our polar moment of inertia. And I've put up three shafts here, and these are the kind of shafts you're going to be dealing with in lab. And what we have is a solid shaft, and its polar moment of inertia can be calculated J value from this equation right here. And if you notice, that's to the fourth power. So if it's in inches, it's going to be inches to the fourth. If it's millimeters, it's going to be millimeters to the fourth. So J is always a fourth power. And we have the different formulas here for a hollow section. And now this is kind of a neat deal. I don't see a lot of textbooks doing this, and I've came in and put this into the lab where we're going to deal with open sections. And what do I mean by open? Right here we cut this open. I mean it's the same size shaft as the hollow, but we cut this open. And it's going to have a different J value. So we're going to be able to come in here and calculate those J values for these different shafts after we measure them, put them in here. And what we would like to see is the larger J. That's going to do what? The larger this number, the smaller the stress on the shaft. So that's kind of what we're wanting to head to. Now, stress distribution. Um, here's a solid shaft and a hollow shaft, and I want to talk about use of material where stress is being applied on that cross-sectional area. In a solid shaft, we have the stress distribution going all the way out to the outer side, whereas the maximum stress is on that outer side. I mentioned that earlier. Tau max is TC over J, and it's all the way out here. So this is our highest stressed area. We have a lot of material right here carrying a small amount of stress. If I look at the hollow shaft, 
our stress distribution has changed. More uniform stress being carried by the material, and, the, and we're still seeing tau max being on the outer portion of that. So that's our stress distribution. Now I did a quick FEA on a shaft just to kind of show you something. If I did a two inch shaft and put a torque of 300 foot pounds, and my material is A36, pure torque, I'm going to come in here and get a plot of where are the stresses the worst. Now let's look at this little plot and understand what's going on. Von Mises is our combined stresses. This arrow is representing our yield strength, which we saw that before in the materials that we looked up. And so red up here is really going past the yield strength. So we're yielding that material. We're going into the plastic deformation. As long as I go all the way down here to blue, we're seeing that there's really not much stress. So in this solid shaft, you can see there's not much stress being carried by the material here. It's being carried by that furthest out material. So this is kind of dead weight. Now then, torsional deformation, another equation we need to remember. Now this is basically good for circular shafts. We have a different phenomenon going on. We have square shafts and I'll probably cover that in machine elements. Now, when we talk about this, we have our torque. We know what that is. We can measure the length of our shaft. And we know what J is, but we have this animal right here, G. Okay, what is G? G is our modulus of shear elasticity in shear. Okay, we know what modulus elasticity is in tensile. That's E. That's our linear line that we talk about on the stress, standard, stress strain diagram. Now, what we have to do is we're going to have to find where do we find this G value right here. Now, to find that G value, we have to uh, come in here and use this equation right here. This is our modulus elasticity that we're going to see in the published data. So on steel, it's about 30 mega PSI. And we have this animal cod's poisson's ratio. Remember, we talked about that on that A36 steel. That was 0.26. So if we know E and our poisson's ratio, we could rewrite this equation in terms of G and find our value for that. And again, it's going to be smaller than the E value is going to be. Now, what is Poisson's ratio? Let's talk about that for a second a bit more. If I take a piece of material and I stretch it, longitudinal strain, stretching here, there is going to be a strain that is going inward, and that material is going to narrow down in size. And so what I can do is come over here and take the lateral strain, that's the change in the cross-section here, over the longitudinal strain, okay, and divide those out. Now this is going to give us our Poisson's ratio. Now this is the equation for tensile. If we do compression, we're going to have a little bit different formula and we'll cover that in a later episode. So let's go back and look at this. We know how to get torque, we know how to get length, we know how to get G and J. Now we can come in here and calculate our angle of twist. One of the things I want to point out is that is going to come in radians. So it's not in degrees, but radians. And to get radians to degrees, you need to multiply it times 180 over pi. So don't forget to do that. Now, I like this slide because it talks to us about what does a part look like when it breaks. Now, in our lab, we're not going to break our parts. We're only going to go to a point just below the yield point so we can reuse the samples over and over. And we're going to learn what the, the properties of those different shapes are going to be and what's the advantages of them. So here we have a solid ductile bar. And when it breaks from torsion, it's going to look like a flat granular type. You're going to see some smearing on it and rubbing of the materials more than likely. Here's a solid bar of brittle material. Now, I put both of these images up here and I'll put green arrows on them. If I was twisting this shaft this way, I'm going to get a helix that looks like this. If I'm twisting the shaft this way, I'm going to get a helix like this. So this is a good way to look at failures and identify what direction were things turning when they failed. Now, a tube that is a ductile material, that's something that's going to want to stretch more, not is brittle and it's a hollow tube is going to kind of collapse down on itself. If it's a a brittle material in a tube, it's just going to have a flat failure again. So here's a picture of a shaft that was brittle and this is heat treated material so this is going to be really strong and brittle and a lot of times when we have a, a failure it can have fragments coming off of that. We're going to see pieces coming out so a lot of times we may be worried about those pieces coming out in cars on the transmissions in race cars, you see them putting shields over that so they don't have fragments coming out and hurting the, the driver. Now here's an engine with a drive shaft. Now this is going to be a ductile material, more so than brittle, and here's its failure. Look how it twisted in on itself. 
and that's probably from popping the clutch with a big load on and it will just twist that shaft right off now at this point we've kind of got you some uh, background in terms of what torsion is you're going to have a video on the lab prep talking about how to use our testing machine and we're going to be utilizing strain gauges to measure the strain on the shaft and converting that over to torque so i hope that helps you guys out and we'll see you in lab